Hey everyone, it's technology expert Burton Kelso here with another tech tip to help you get the most out of the technology in your life. Today we're talking about how to use OneDrive on a Macintosh computer. I know that kind of sounds like an oxymoron, but in these days of limited cloud storage services, you might want to start thinking about using that OneDrive account on your Macintosh computer. If you're not familiar, OneDrive is the cloud-based service that is created and hosted by Microsoft. Now, OneDrive is usually included for free in Windows 10, where you only get about five gigabytes of storage. But if you're an Office 365 subscriber, then you get at least one terabyte of storage with OneDrive, which makes it an excellent choice to use for backing up or at least creating a storage or an online storage for all of your files and pictures and other stuff across all of your devices. Because the good thing about OneDrive is that it works not only on Windows computers, it'll work on Macintosh computers, it'll work on smartphones and tablets. Uh, it's just available for everything out there. So why not set up a system that will allow you to take some of that storage away from your Macintosh. And if you're a MacBook Air user or a MacBook Pro user and you're running low on space, why pay Apple their 99 cents or $1.99 a month if you're already using the Microsoft Office 365 suite? Makes perfect sense. In my opinion, you probably need to consolidate your cloud storage services and look at going with one storage service for all of your devices. Doesn't matter if it's iCloud or if it's Dropbox or if it's Box or even if it's OneDrive. It's best just to use one cloud storage system for all of your stuff so that you can keep track of all of your files and photos and other precious information. Now, just to kind of give you a um, brief layout of where OneDrive is, you may have to download it on your Mac. On a Windows computer, which I'll show you here in just a second, um, and I didn't want to shrink everything down, but I did. Let's go to the desktop. So on a Windows desktop, uh, it's just a simple matter of clicking on the OneDrive in the lower right-hand corner. It'll show you OneDrive, and of course mine is having issues syncing and you can go into settings and look at your uh, OneDrive setup. Now to tell the difference between paid OneDrive and on, or free of OneDrive, if you've got one terabyte of, or, or a thousand gigabits of storage or gigabytes, sorry about that, then you have access to OneDrive. But if you don't have the five, you only have five gigabytes and you're only using um, the free version of OneDrive. So with that said, that's the history of OneDrive. It's integrated into Windows. It's just a matter of clicking on search, typing in OneDrive, and then it will bring up OneDrive, the application with files stored in the cloud. And the difference between them, if it's got a check mark, it means it's saved. If the information's got a cloud, it's on the cloud. And if it's got a check, again, it's been recently checked. And then finally, if it's got the two yin and yang uh, arrows, it means it's actively synchronizing information. Now, you didn't want to see OneDrive on a, on a Windows computer, so let me show you on a Macintosh computer what it looks like. So you Mac users out there, you have to go to the App Store and download OneDrive onto your Macintosh. So that would be step one. So going to the Mac Store, as you can see, I've recently updated OneDrive, but it's a matter of just going to the App Store, typing in OneDrive, making sure obviously you're logged into your iCloud account on your Macintosh computer that you want to get. But once you have, uh, you're logged into your I, Apple ID, then you can go to OneDrive, download the program, and get it installed on your Macintosh computer. Now, as far as where OneDrive is stored, you could definitely go up to Finder and do a search or look for the icon down here in the lower right hand corner or Apple is nice enough to put it on the menu bar at the top. Uh, if, you can, if you click on it, 
it lets you do several options. The first and main option is once you click on the OneDrive icon in the upper corner, you can click on OneDrive, the folder itself, and you can see all of the documents that you currently have stored in OneDrive. And the good thing about OneDrive, like any cloud storage system, if you click on a new folder, it'll automatically create a new folder up in OneDrive. Now, as you can see, if you open up Finder, your OneDrive um, icon, or not icon, but menu item is stored off to the left. So if you have items that are on your desktop, you can definitely just grab that item and then you can just re move, relocate it to OneDrive. You can drop it there and it would allow you to store your information in OneDrive. And as you can see, uh, it's synchronizing that stuff. It removes it off your desktop and it frees up space on your Mac, which is a beautiful thing, right? Yes, I knew you would love that because if you have a Mac, you definitely are struggling with storage problems because some Macintosh products don't allow you to update the storage or the hard drives in them. So utilizing and storing stuff on the cloud, uh, it's definitely a good idea as far as utilizing OneDrive. Now, the downside, which is not really a downside, is that you're always logged into OneDrive. So if you go to help and settings again and go to preferences, your account is logged into OneDrive, which allows you to see what stuff is there. Now, as far as your preferences, as far as OneDrive, you can set up OneDrive however you want to. If you don't want it logged in all the time, you can definitely set up OneDrive where you can just log into it like you would a Dropbox account and access your stuff on the go. Most people want to utilize OneDrive like an external hard drive, like one of these, right? Where you've got access to it all the time. Well, you can set up OneDrive to do that too, and, and it saves you from having to log into the computer. So if you, uh, you can tell it to open it, log in. You can tell it to hide the dock icon, which, oh, let's see if we can, I don't wanna hide it, but you can show notifications about sharing and editing, which is kind of an important thing because if you're sharing things to your OneDrive account and you're adding them on multiple devices, then it's good to see if a lot of stuff has been deleted out of OneDrive or you can see the progress of the stuff that you've shared within OneDrive. Going back to our settings, uh, if you delete a lot of files, which is commonplace setting on both OneDrive on the Windows and on the Macintosh computers, then you can definitely get a warning when you delete a ton of files. Now you can go up to the cloud of your OneDrive account and retrieve that information. But if you delete a lot of files, it's that you definitely want it to show that it is a lot of files have been deleted off of the computer. Now, another setting that is very important, especially for Macintosh users, is the files on demand feature, which allows you to free up space on your computer by downloading files as you as you use them. If you click on learn, learn more, it basically just says uh, save space with OneDrive. You can save space on your device, making your files online. You can see thumbnails, so you don't even have the application in involved. Also, you can see important information about all your files. So if you are limited on space on your Mac, you definitely want to turn on files on demand. Right now it's off, but if I turn on files on demand, all OneDrive files and folders will download to this Mac. So you depending on how much storage space you have on your Mac, either you wanna turn that setting on or you wanna turn that setting off. And then finally, if we go back to our OneDrive, let's go to manage apps. If you go to apps, there are some applications that are blocked from automatically downloading the OneDrive. This is not a setting that I would use on a normal basis, so you can pretty much ignore that setup. But again, if you have OneDrive installed on your Macintosh computer, A, it will allow you to act as OneDrive was an external hard drive connected to your Mac. If you go, if we go back to OneDrive, as you can see, there is the OneDrive folder. And again, there's several ways that you can access it. If you, we get out of Chrome and go to View, excuse me, sorry, go to Finder, and then under the Go section, we can click directly on, and OneDrive disappeared on me. Let's go back to Home and see if it's there. But normally, uh, you should have your settings for OneDrive 
there under Finder. Um, if you didn't find it under Finder, you can definitely go to the menu or go to the menu at the top. You can go to Open Folder. It'll actually show your OneDrive folder, and there it is in the list of other folders on your Mac. But you can, if you had stuff in iCloud Drive and you wanted to back up that information, you can to OneDrive. You can definitely drag and drop stuff into the OneDrive folder, and of course, vice versa with iCloud Drive. But again, we're talking about OneDrive, not iCloud Drive. Uh, one of the other things that you need to consider as far as using OneDrive is to make sure that you understand what OneDrive backs up versus what iCloud Drive backs up. Now if you're, and I'll show you an example and go back to the desktop. Now if you're a Mac, a true Mac user and you're using Keynote numbers and pages, that information is automatically down or uploaded to iCloud Drive as a part of Apple's setup. Now, Apple doesn't really talk well with Microsoft, so if you're using any of those programs, or, or I should say, if you're using Microsoft Office, it ain't going to OneDrive. Now, the good thing about OneDrive is, is that if you're using Keynote numbers and pages, that information will actually go to OneDrive. But remember, if you're using iCloud, iCloud Drive, your Microsoft Office documents will not be backed up unless you manually put them there. As far as Office is concerned, another good thing about Microsoft Office, using it on your Mac, and I know if you're a Mac purist, you're probably going, oh man, why would I want to do that? Because if the newer versions of Office 365, if you work in Word or Excel or PowerPoint or any of the Office suite of programs, your main destination as far as storing, storing your documents is going to be in OneDrive. And so of course, if it's stored in OneDrive, it definitely will store that information across your devices. So it doesn't matter if you're in your phone, if you decide to go back to your Windows computer or another Macintosh computer that you've installed OneDrive on, all of that information is going to transfer across all your devices. Nothing special as far as cloud-based services are concerned, but at the same time, all cloud services are storage devices that are designed to make sure that you can access all of your files or the files that you upload from anywhere in the world. Now, I'll give you a quick tip, at least if you're a cross-platform user. Now, and we've got to get back to Windows, so let me go back to our desktop. Let me show the Windows desktop. Now, one of the settings that you can do if you're cross-platform like myself is to open up the OneDrive um, setting, and I closed all those windows again, so you don't get those wonderful subtitles hear me but can you see me let's open up those subtitles so you can see what the heck I'm saying so anyway um, if we get this other window up there we go so the, anyway if we go back to our Windows desktop uh, and look at how OneDrive is set up on a Windows computer if you're a cross-platform user you definitely can open up OneDrive uh, go to help and go to settings and under settings what you don't see on a Mac is the actual option to back up your folder folders to OneDrive. So on a Windows computer, you definitely can manage the backup and tell specific folders to automatically back up to OneDrive, like your desktop documents and pictures, which is great because if you save something to any of these folders, it automatically backs it up to OneDrive. So if you are wanting to store stuff across multiple computers, you definitely want to enable backup on the Windows end. That way your stuff is going to show up on your Macintosh computer and then you can have peace of mind knowing that all of your files are going to synchronize across all of your devices. So again, download OneDrive if you're a Macintosh user and use it to, off or to store extra stuff in the cloud if you already have an Office 365 account. It's pretty easy. You can definitely drag and drop between folders like I've done here. Uh, you can, obviously I'm saving something to my desktop. I can do that with any of these folders and I could of course move folders off my Mac into OneDrive and it will move that information off my Mac into OneDrive and that way I'm saving space uh, and hopefully money too if I've got an Office 365 account. So keep that in mind. One last tip I would add as far as using OneDrive if you're a Macintosh user 
OneDrive offers you some redundancy, but not a lot of redundancy. So if you're a small business user, or you've got a lot of important files that you never ever want to use, it would be a good idea to use a cloud-based backup system to make sure that your OneDrive files are safe. A system like Carbonite at 83 bucks a year for unlimited backup or Backblaze for around the same price are good options to make sure that your cloud backup services are backed up. Uh, it's a no-brainer as far as getting a cloud backup service when you're using cloud storage services like OneDrive. So invest in one so if something catastrophic happens to your computer, your Macintosh computer, you always have backup in the cloud with say Carbonite or Backblaze in case your Mac or your OneDrive account fails. So with that said, um, <laughs> if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you to find out if there's ways that I can help you with OneDrive on your Mac or any other tech tips out there that you may have questions about. Now I always have to ask, but be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you got something out of this video or you just like to see my smiling face appear on your social media and YouTube channels. And as well as social media, be sure to follow myself, Burton Kelso, the technology expert, or my company, Integral, which is kind of covered up. Let me lean over a little bit. There's the bad. And it's down in the corner, too. Um, for great tips and tips and tricks that are designed to help you get more from the computers and technology you use in your home and office. So with that said, I love technology. I've read all the manuals, and I'm serious about making technology fun and easy to use for everyone. So take care of yourself and do many things to make you smile. And thanks for watching.